Darolutamide is an orally available androgen receptor antagonist. Uh, it is different from enzalutamide and different from apalutamide. Those two therapies, those two drugs were actually developed using a bicalutamide backbone. They're, they're amides, they're, they're chemically related to bicalutamide. Uh, Darolutamide is, is not uh, related, has a different structure, uh, and, and as such uh, may have different, a different profile. Um, it looks really good in terms of its phase one and two data in terms of disease response. In fact, if we were to take the phase two data in CRPC uh, with darolutamide and put it side by side with the phase two data from apalutamide, they look very, very similar. Uh, one uh, area where, where darolutamide may actually have an advantage, uh, certainly over enzalutamide, would be a reduction in CNS toxicities. Um, many patients who take enzalutamide experience a significant amount of fatigue. Uh, there's also some concern about cognitive function uh, and even falls that occur with enzalutamide. Now, interestingly, many patients take enzalutamide and have none of those problems. So there are probably a group of patients who are at risk for these problems, uh, which is something that we'll be exploring. However, with darolutamide, it, with, a, with a lower degree of CNS, CSF penetration, we might see patients who, um, even if they are at risk for some of those cognitive problems, don't experience the problem. Darolutamide is another novel oral antiandrogen that's currently in phase three trials to determine its effectiveness for M0 CRPC. So theoretically, we've already talked about enzalutamide and the trials that are ongoing for that approval in M0 CRPC. We've already talked about apalutamide and their trials. And now this third key drug is darolutamide or ODM201. This is a drug that's being developed by Bayer Pharmaceuticals and it's being developed in the exact same way essentially that apalutamide is being developed. Some very similar phase three trial uh, other than the fact that darolutamide has come along a little bit later and would likely not complete the trials for a couple more years and likely would not get to market as soon as enzalutamide or apalutamide. Darolutamide is also a novel oral antiandrogen. The slight difference is that it seems to be effective not only against the wild type androgen receptor but also mutated version, versions of the androgen receptor. And what that means clinically, at least what people believe, is that since it works against these mutated androgen receptors, the theory is that it may be slightly more effective in the long run than either apalutamide or enzalutamide. However, that remains to be proven. The other interesting thing is that it has a novel uh, chemical structure, novel uh, configuration that the drug does not cross the blood-brain barrier to any significant degree. So people in the field feel that because it doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier, it might have less toxicity than apalutamide or enzalutamide, specifically less fatigue and less falls and certainly fewer, less risk of a seizure. Now again, that is theoretical and that needs to be borne out in the phase three trials. The drug is developed a little bit later. It's a newer drug, so we don't have the robust phase three data yet that we do for apalutamide or enzalutamide. Darolutamide, like apalutamide, would represent uh, an, a further incremental improvement in androgen receptor targeting, uh, perhaps with a better profile, uh, and perhaps because of its differing structure, and we don't know the answer to this, perhaps it's going to have clinical efficacy in some patients who have experienced progression on enzalutamide or apalutamide. It's too early for us to know that yet, uh, but that's something that would need to be explored.